harm reduction. Now, harm reduction is an interesting topic. Uh, it can be a somewhat controversial topic. You can start very heated exchanges. Um, and, and personally, I, I'm not fully on the harm reduction bandwagon. I see its purpose and its usefulness in some cir circumstances, um, but then kind of shy away from it in others, depending on what substance we're talking about. So the idea behind harm reduction is to reduce the negative consequences of substance use, whether that's tobacco use, alcohol, or illicit drugs. But what you're doing is by ex trying to reduce just the consequences of use, you're accepting that substance use will occur. So we'll, basically the rest of this presentation is just a few examples of what harm reduction might look like, but that's the general overview. That basically explains all harm reduction programs that are out there. Um, but it can, it's hard to, to accept that a, a product or a substance or a drug is being used that you're trying to prevent. Like it's a very odd public health position to be in saying we're not trying to promote this use but we want to make sure that people are using it in a safe way. And it's a very fine line in some circumstances which I'll try to highlight between saying you can do this in a safe way without essentially promoting this still risky but slightly less risky behavior as being uh, healthy. And, and it's a very fine line that not everyone can, and not every substance is, is best for. So examples. So the classic example within the drug and substance use is, ex is needle exchange programs for injection drug users. Um, injection drug use is quite possibly the most hazardous way to consume drugs. Um, the sharing of needles has, um, can and has started viral epidemics. Um, the most recent one that comes to mind was in uh, southern Indiana, a very rural county in Indiana, where because of injection drug use of heroin, which occurred because of high rates of addiction to prescription opioids, um, there was an HIV, AIDS, and hepatitis B epidemic. Essentially, none of them knew about HIV or were very knowledgeable about HIV. They all started sharing needles, only essentially started with one person who had HIV, and then that ended up spreading to 200 other people in a community of only about 2,000. So from a prevalence of essentially zero to a prevalence of about 10%, this HIV epidemic took off in something in within like 18 months. It was very, very quick. So by adopting a needle exchange program, you're accepting that someone will use heroin or some other substance by injection, but you're saying that by doing so, um, they can do it in a safe way. They're not going to get an infectious disease, they're not going to spread their own infectious disease, even though they may be addicted to the substance. Now with alcohol use, one of the classic harm reduction things that occurs in alcohol um, circles is preventing drunk driving. By just focusing on the drunk driving, and this image is someone who's using a, an ignition interlock system where essentially you have to, to blow a BAC below the legal limit in order for the car to start, um, or in some cases a BAC of zero for the car to start, um, you're accepting that not only is alcohol use occurring, you're accepting that um, heavy alcohol use is occurring to the point of people being drunk, legally drunk, so that their inhibitions and their um, instincts are inhibited. So now you're just trying to divert them from their car and have someone else drive home. So this can be designated driver programs, this can be ride sharing services, and for drunk driving, this can be at times helpful when it's done properly in the right manner. This can reduce the prevalence of drunk driving. But there are some issues. One, people are still drinking heavily, and actually knowing that there's a designated, designated driver allows people to drink more than they would consume otherwise. In addition, for, for designated driver programs in particular, the designated drivers still typically drink. They might not drink four or five drinks that their buddies are having, but they still have one or two. So it's not that they're completely clean of, of alcohol. There still might be something in their system which can impair their ability to drive. Now, tobacco use. Here's where, at least in my head, it's controversial. And it's controversial because, well, I think it's controversial and I don't really know whether to accept it or not. So for injection drug users, I set, accept the harm reduction approach for needle exchange programs. 
Um, when done properly, I accept that drunk driving countermeasures can reduce drunk driving and the consequences of that, even though high rates of alcohol use may still occur. But for tobacco use, I'm not yet convinced. So there's a large segment of the tobacco control community who have essentially promoted e-cigarettes and smokeless tobacco as a healthier way to consume nicotine compared to traditional tobacco cigarettes. Now, pretty much any behavior you do will be healthier than traditional cigarettes. Um, E-cigarettes and smokeless tobacco certainly have less rates of disease than cigarettes, but they're not zero. So you're not eliminating a disease risk, you're simply reducing it. People who use these are still addicted to nicotine, which you find somewhere else. But those actually aren't my main concerns. My main concerns is that you're normalizing the smoking behavior, particularly with e-cigarettes, and the idea that people are puffing out what looks like smoke from a distance, even though it's not, although it's not water vapor either, it's not healthy for you, there are consequences of use. And I'm just not convinced that the, the health benefits of promoting e-cigarettes um, or smokeless tobacco outweighs the normalization of tobacco use all over again. You're not normalizing tobacco cigarettes, but there's also no re there's really not enough research now saying that e-cigarette users only use e-cigarettes and never switch to cigarettes. There's a lot of, of cross use. So there are people who promote e-cigarettes and smokeless tobacco as a harm reduction approach to tobacco use. But personally, um, from the research I've seen and the, my experience in the field, I'm not yet convinced that that's a right way to go about it. And finally, drug substitution. So a harm reduction approach um, in drug substitution is essentially in using an entirely different substance rather than something which is more, more dangerous. So here's my anecdote for this one. I am working on a study on brief intervention. So five to seven, seven minute uh, motivational interviews with these uh, research participants to try to curb their illicit drug use. I'm talking to a guy, he's three months into the study, it's time for him to do the brief intervention, he's in the control group, and he's in the study for heroin. I give him the screening, the, the screening guideline that we use, the, the screening questionnaire, and it turns out that he's actually reduced his heroin to nothing. He hasn't touched heroin in a month, but he is smoking a ridiculous amount of marijuana. I'm talking like an ounce of day type of marijuana. And I'm talking to him about it and I'm telling him like, this is a really high amount of marijuana. Like, do you think this is dangerous for you? What do you think about this? And his response is, well, I could be doing $400 of heroin a day. So this is healthier, so I'd rather be doing this. And since I was new at it, this was like the, the first research I've ever done in addiction science. I didn't really have a good comeback for it. I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and went on my day and, and gave him his gift card. But that's drug substitution. Heroin, especially injection drug use um, with heroin is very dangerous. Smoking marijuana is not necessarily a safe thing to do, but it is safer than heroin. It's kind of that argument. It's relatively safer. Um, so it's not something, again, personally, I'm, I'm going to promote drug substitution, but it's definitely a harm reduction approach for some of the, the substances which tend to be associated with high rates of negative consequences, whether that's overdoses, um, very easy to become dependent, um, easy to build tolerance, or with injection drug use, uh, the presence of communicable diseases, of infectious diseases, which are highly associated with, with the, the substance use behavior themselves. So harm reduction, the idea that we accept some substance use goes on, we're just trying to make that safer, relatively safer. We can't always eliminate a risk, but we're trying to reduce it to as low as humanly possible.